This video is going to explain how the government can use monetary policy in an expansionary and in a contractionary way and the effect that these will have on the level of national income. If you're not sure what this model is representing, you should watch the earlier videos on aggregate demand, aggregate supply and equilibrium in this model. A contractionary monetary policy occurs when the government or a central bank increases interest rates, so interest rates are getting higher. The business sector will recognise that borrowing money for investment will be more expensive and therefore they will decrease the level of investment in this situation, the level of investment is I1, and this leads to a level of aggregate demand of C plus I1 plus G plus X minus M. The decrease of investment will lead to a decrease in aggregate demand. And that will lead to a movement of aggregate demand from AD1 to AD2, where AD2 equals C plus I2 plus G plus X minus M, where I2 is lower than I1 because of the higher interest rates. The amount by which investment falls is this amount here. The original level of investment of I1 led to a national income of NY1, but the decrease in investment that leads to a decrease in aggregate demand also leads to a decrease in national income and national income falls from NY1 to NY2. Decrease in aggregate demand leads to a decrease in national income. So the result of the higher interest rate, which is our contractionary monetary policy, is a smaller economy with a lower level of, of output, national income, and this will lead to greater levels of unemployment and lower levels of economic growth. The reverse of this would be an expansionary monetary policy. In an expansionary monetary policy, the government or the central bank will decrease interest rates. With a decreased interest rate, investment now becomes more attractive for businesses because the cost of borrowing money is lower and they will increase their levels of investment. Investment will increase in this model by this much. And what we'll have is a new level of aggregate demand. The new level of aggregate demand is because investment has increased from I1 to I2 due to the lower interest rate. The result of the expansionary monetary policy is that the increase in aggregate demand from AD1 to AD2 will lead to an increase in national income from NY1 to NY2. We can see here that the decrease of, in of investment over here is smaller than the, de than the increase in national income. The increase in investment has a, is multiplied out through the economy and there is a multiplier effect happening there. So the effect of this expansionary monetary policy which occurs from the decrease in interest rate leading to an increase in investment from I1 to I2 is an increase in aggregate demand from AD1 to AD2 and an increase in national income from NY1 to NY2. And this will lead, this is uh, greater levels of output, greater levels of economic growth and lower rates of unemployment. For a more detailed look at how these interest rates fall uh, using the monetary policy, we're going to show a more complicated diagram and it's going to be entitled the Keynesian Transmission Mechanism. If you want to watch that to see how the interest rates, uh, how they fall and how this affects investment.